Recently, the mathematician and founder of the intellectual dark web, Eric Weinstein, has complained that scientists are not being fair to the idea of intelligent design. I have been asked to respond. Well, it turns out I already addressed a nearly identical complaint a year ago during an AMA session, so let's see what Eric has to say, and then we'll look back at that clip. It is very clear that when you have uh, various breeds of dog, they are intelligently designed. When you produce a mule from a donkey and a horse that is not a natural animal, you are producing an intelligently designed animal when you create orchid varieties. So... In all of these cases, you have to admit that Darwinian theory has perception-mediated selection, uh, the display of bowerbirds, um, where they build these structures and adorn them with blue in some cases. Perception-mediated selection is a form of endogenous design, which is intelligent because it is mediated through perception. Right. And then what do you get from the uh, atheistic science community? Is like, we will have no such discussion. I did edit that clip down a bit. There's a link in the video description to see the entire thing. He's saying that organisms shape each other's evolution through their interactions and through the selection pressures they put on each other. He does not think this is a God-type version of intelligent design. In fact, he complains about what he calls Jesus smuggling, which is something he says other intelligent design advocates do. He's saying that animals with brains, animals that are intelligent, interact with each other and shape each other's evolution, and he thinks that that should be called intelligent design. Apparently, he's unaware that these things already have official names in evolutionary biology. They're already well-studied, already discussed widely in the scientific literature. But his complaint is not unique. Here's my clip from last year's AMA. For a lot of the intelligent design and creationist uh, apologists, there's there's always this idea that evolution should have some sort of guiding agent at the very least. And obviously for us, we've engineered crops, you know, we've done similar things to animals like dogs. We've particularly bred for particular traits. You've got things like sexual selection and birds of paradise. Is there a legitimate question of should we disregard potential intelligent input into the evolutionary process or are there other ways that we can consider that? I want to divide that question into two parts. So you talked about humans who are genetically engineering organisms, and then you talked about things like sexual selection. I want to separate those two things because the human has a deep understanding of what he or she is doing when he or she is engineering an organism or trying to take a crop and make it better for some specific function. Like I want to make take this crop and make it work in a desert. This is with someone who has deep understanding of how evolution works how genetics works, and they're trying, they're carefully planning for the future of the evolution of this little lineage. That is very much unique to humans. Would it make sense to start calling genetic engineering intelligent design? Are scientists just being grumpy when they say that intelligent design is not a thing in science? Well, I suppose you could call this intelligent design, but we already have words for it. We call it selective breeding when humans are selecting different plants or animals to mate with each other to produce offspring with new traits that they want. And we call it genetic engineering when we are using genetic techniques to add and subtract genes from the genome of an organism. So those things already have names. And if we wanted to just start calling it intelligent design, well, that's gonna be extra confusing too because the word intelligent design already has a meaning as well. That's a term that creationists have invented to talk about their specific ideas about God interfering with evolution. What about intelligence in general? Is that shaping the direction of evolution? Is sexual selection a form of intelligent design? Assuming, of course, that these animals are using their minds, at least somewhat, when selecting mates. The red-winged blackbird. It's a blackbird with a bright red spot on its wing. They're amazing birds. Only the males have this, this red spot. And it's a, it's a red spot with a yellow line. They're very proud of it. They show it off during mating season. They, they do these songs and they flash these bright red feathers. <laughs> And it gives away their hiding spots, right? It puts them in danger to show this off. But females are attracted to it. And females don't know why they're attracted to it. They're just very attracted to this red spot. Well, I used to work at a wildlife rehabilitation center. So we'd take animals that were poisoned or hit by cars or whatever. And we'd nurse them back to health and then release them. It was just a fun way to get close to wild animals. And we had one of these red-winged blackbirds. And we were feeding it the diet that we thought that they should eat. It's red started to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer every time it molted. We weren't feeding it the very specific, perfect diet, 
And so it couldn't maintain the red pigment. It's a very expensive pigment to make and needs the perfect nutritional balance to produce that. So when a female is selecting for that, she's actually selecting for really good food finding abilities. She wouldn't know that. She's developed an attraction to this red spot because the individuals that happen to be attracted to the, this, this red, they happen to have babies that were ended up being healthier because they were good at foraging. That's what the signal is actually conveying to the female. She doesn't understand that, but she selects for it. And many of her female babies will inherit their mother's instinctual fascination for men with red shoulders. Having chosen a man with red shoulders means she's going to have healthy babies. They'll actually survive to adulthood. So the desire for red will spread, which puts pressure on males to have brighter and brighter red shoulders. It's a really beautiful acceleration of the ability for natural selection to promote the trait of good foraging skills. But this is not... The female is not trying to change the course of evolution. She is adapted to do this, and he is adapted to produce this brighter and brighter mark as time goes on. Are female blackbirds intelligent? Yeah, they can figure stuff out. Are they shaping the evolution of the males? Yeah, they are, but they are not intentionally designing or aiming to something in the distant future. They're not trying to make redder males. It, it helps a lot. I think it makes it very clear why you're wearing a red t-shirt. Um, just be honest. Yes. Um, <laughs> no. If you liked that clip, subscribe to my channel, of course. The clip came from a little Ask Me Anything session organized by my friend Samuel Davis. He just started a new podcast on YouTube. It's called The Socratic Sessions. There he will interview philosophers on the nature of consciousness. Go check that out. I drew his logo for him. So you can think of me every time you see it. John Perry, signing out for now. Look at those big feet. Shit. <laughs>